So Fudge, I think when it comes to the cigar community, there's a lot of misconceptions and misinformation out there about the process of smoking a cigar. I mean, it's pretty simplistic when you think about it. And I think cigars are meant to be enjoyed. That's the, that's the premise of enjoying a premium cigar, right? Yeah, just don't overthink it, you know, yeah. light it, smoke it, right. enjoy it, it's however you want. It's supposed to be a want. relaxing experience. The last thing you want to worry about are rules that other people, you know, put on you to follow. Right. At, at the end of the day, it's really not much more beyond cut, light, smoke, enjoy. Right. Right? So that's exactly what we're talking about today. Yep. So Maz, one of the most common misconceptions that I hear a lot is that you should keep your cigars in a refrigerator, which is not the case. If you put your cigars in a refrigerator, you're not giving your cigars enough humidity. Right. Yeah, it's funny because, you know, I think it's more of a beginner mistake. I think if you've been around cigars for a little while, you realize that's a misconception, right? And obviously misinformation. They come in and they say, you know, when I get the cigars, I bring them right home and I put them in the drawer inside the refrigerator. I'm like, have you ever looked at what that drawer says? And they're like, well, it says crisper. I'm like, yeah. Well, that means that it's meant for lettuce and like maybe lunch meat. It's not meant for cigars. It actually pulls humidity out, hence the word crisper, right? So cigars are meant to be kept at room temperature, mm -hmm. which in most households is 70 degrees, right. right? So, you know, you get them home from your shop, they're in a Ziploc bag. If there's a Bova to pack in there, obviously they're gonna be good for a little while, but ultimately you wanna put them in a humidor. But as far as the temperature goes, you know, you don't want to put them in the refrigerator. There's no need for it. Actually, it doesn't do anything to the cigars to enhance them. As a matter of fact, it would be detrimental to the cigars because in reality, a refrigerator, like air conditioning, will pull humidity right. out It'll of the air. It'll dry the cigars out. Right. So that is, a, that is the, one of the major flaws when people have misinformation and misconceptions about cigars. Putting cigars in a refrigerator, major no-no. I think people are confused when it comes down to like why we enjoy cigars. Like I've had that question many times over the years. People say like, well, you know, if you don't inhale it, then what's the pleasure of it? Does it get you, you know, does it get you high? Do you feel, no. And at the end of the day, it all comes down to taste. Just like a spirit, even though you consume a spirit, to me, cigars really speak to me because it's about the element of taste. Right. And when it comes to taste, you know, on my palate, maybe through a retro hail, but not in my lungs. Right. So it's a major misconception when people think that cigars are supposed to be enjoyed by inhaling them. Right. Like that's definitely not the case. And anybody out there, and people tell me sometimes, they're like, why inhale them? And right away I'm like, you should never inhale a cigar. Right. For sure. Yeah, and you know, when you're smoking a cigar, it doesn't have to do with the nicotine content. You know, like you said, it's more of the flavor on the palate. For sure. I mean, it's a different, to me, it's apples and oranges. And I think the more people think about it that way, where there are two different elements, the better off everyone's going to be. Sure. So another thing I hear a lot, Maz, is that Cuban cigars are the best cigars in the world. Yeah, Fox. So when it comes down to the whole Cuban mystique, I think it's all about the forbidden fruit. Like, you know, as people, we always want what we can't have. Let's right. face it, right? And I think that's the way it is with Cubans. Like if tomorrow the U.S. said no more French wine in the country, Everyone, first of all, would have an urgency to go out and buy French wine, and they would swear it's the best thing in the world. Right. Which, again, if you like French wine, that's fine. But people shouldn't chase that ghost of what you know the forbidden fruit is. Right? There's great wine in Italy. There's great wine in California, Argentina, even Australia. Right? But just because it is different and it's forbidden doesn't mean it's better. You know, when we drink coffee, if coffee is from Kona, if it's from Sumatra. You know, just because we can, it's available to us, we shouldn't discount it and be like, well, it's not so special. I wish I couldn't have this. It was forbidden to me because it would be perceived as special and, you know, like the best. Right. So I think when it comes down to it, you have to trust your pal and be honest with yourself. And if Cuban tobacco is your thing and Cuban cigars are your thing and it's your favorite, then so be it. But in reality, if you hold yourself back to only thinking that Cuban cigars are the best just because they're not, you're not allowed to have them, you're really selling yourself short. Right.
you know, so I get this all the time when I talk to customers, they say that, uh, you know, they only smoke Cuban cigars, mm -hmm. which I think, you know, they're missing out on the big picture. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so much more tobacco out there, um, you know, that's, in my opinion, better than Cuban tobacco these days. Right. You know, years ago, uh, the soil in Cuba was excellent. They, you know, they grew great tobacco. Um, you know, I think this day and age though, you know, the domestic tobacco, the Nicaraguan tobacco, Dominican tobacco, uh, you know, is grown to perfection. Mm -hmm. I mean, the soil is perfect, mm -hmm. you know, um, they got their game together. You know, they brought all the Cuban uh, heritage over sure. on, you know, on how to grow tobacco. Right. I so, mean, most of those companies are getting into now at this point, like third generation. Right. Right. So they've had time to hone their craft sure. and grow tobacco in a similar climate, right, in, a, in an area that has obviously superior soil. And they took all their knowledge with them. But, you know, I, I don't want to downplay the whole fact of like it's personal choice for mm -hmm. sure. But I think if you wear like that as a badge of honor, like I only smoke Cuban cigars, it's more, almost like a prestige thing. Like it, it means that you arrived. And at the end of the day, if you just smoke Cuban cigars just because it speaks to your ego, I think you're selling yourself short when it comes to the world of cigars. I agree. So Fox, I think another major misconception is the idea that the darker the cigar is, the stronger it is. I mean, the cigar I'm smoking right now, the Ash and Age Maduro, is a perfect example of that, right? Dark cigar, definitely approachable, sweet flavor, right? Nothing over the top as far as strength goes. What do you think about that? I mean, I agree, you know, when you go into a cigar shop and you see a cigar for the first time, if you're a newbie smoker and you see that dark blend, that dark wrapper, mm -hmm. um, it's not always the case that it's gonna be stronger. Um, so, you know, your best bet would be to obviously to, uh, you know, ask your tobacconist, you know. So, for, for example, the cigar that you're smoking, obviously the Ashton Maduro, the mm -hmm. Asian Maduro, mm -hmm. you know, that cigar is more, uh, you know, mild to medium, a lot of flavor, a lot of sweetness, you know. The cigar that I'm smoking here, you know, you can see the wrappers, you know, on the darker side. Right. You know, which is the Ashton V. I mean, honestly, the wrapper that I'm smoking is darker than your wrapper. Right. It just goes to show you how looks could be deceiving because you would assume by looking aesthetics, right. This will be stronger. Right. Which That's not the case. Not the case, right. You know, this cigar uh, is on the darker side. Um, you know, Ecuadorian wrapper, Ecuadorian sun grown wrapper, a um, lot of spice, a lot of pepper, a lot of power. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this is one of those cigars where, you know, if you went up to the cigar and you said to your tobacconist, hey, you know, would I enjoy this cigar? Mm -hmm. You know, it might not be for you because they're going to tell you it's more fuller body. Yeah, it's definitely best to ask because I think a lot of people are intimidated to go into the local tobacconist and ask questions like that. Mm -hmm. And they'll just choose, and I, honestly, I, I was guilty of that when I first started smoking. Like I've talked about it many times, where I was young, I would just go into a shop and I would basically shop by like label, right. like the, you know, the band and the color of the wrapper. And sometimes I was fooled, and sometimes I wound up actually feeling sick from a cigar sure. at times. It was too much for me at the time. And there's other times that I was pleasantly surprised by a darker cigar that actually had inherent sweetness, mm -hmm. right? Mild to medium bodied. Uh, so it's always best, to obviously, ask your tobacconist. But if you just like look at a cigar and just categorize them as strong based upon the wrapper color, that's a misconception. So you should definitely do your homework a little bit, try different blends, right. but of course, ask your tobacconist. They'll, they'll guide you in the right direction. But just don't, you know, even though we want to shop with our eyes and smoke with our eyes, it's best to know what you're getting into for sure. But darker doesn't necessarily mean stronger. Right. So Maz, another misconception I get all the time is that how you light your cigar has no effect on the flavor. Yeah, and also, there's people out there that say, unless you're using matches, there's no other way to light your cigar, right? And again, it's personal opinion for sure, but there's a time and place for everything, right? The one thing that always jumps out at me when people say that to me is like, it doesn't matter how you light a cigar. I'll die on this hill when it comes to lighting a cigar with a Zippo lighter because it uses lighter fluid, right? right? And lighter fluid will definitely be detrimental to the cigar. Yeah, it'll permeate in the cigar. It will permeate. And people say, well, no, you just let it burn off a little bit. Why would you do that? Like for me, if you're inside, matches are great. I always say it's a romantic way to light a cigar. Right. Maybe you light it with a cedar spill, but if you're indoors, mm -hmm. right? Now picture this, you're out on the golf course, you're on the beach, you're just outside, right. and you're trying to fight with matches, you're trying to fight with a cedar spill, and then you're torching the cigar, the tobacco is getting scorched, it's getting torched. That's not a pleasant experience. Right. So that's where a butane lighter comes into play. Sure. So actually, how you light a cigar really does matter depending on the time and place where you light the cigar. 
There's a time and place for everything, right? right? Uh, but for me, it's it's one of those things where people say, no, you know, it, it doesn't really matter. You can do it any way you wish. And I only light cigars with matches. I'm like, yeah, that's fine if you're inside. Right. But you know, time and place for everything when it comes to lighting a cigar. But the, the number one rule is, Stop with the lighter fluid. It definitely is detrimental to the blend. It's not good, and I would stay away from it. Right. So, Maz, what do you think when people say cigars are only meant to be smoked by men? I mean, honestly, for me, that's laughable. That is total bull****. I see so many women enjoying premium cigars these days. I mean, even for the last 15 years. I mean, it's 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 been a long time since I've seen women really introduced into the cigar culture come in, and honestly, they know their stuff. I mean, they come in, they are educated consumers, and they know cigars. So, and uh, you know, we, we have the luxury of having the cigar Ashton Cigar Bar above our Walnut Street store. I can't tell you how many women come into the store at Walnut Street that are going upstairs to the cigar bar that know their stuff, right? right? They know tobacco, they know blends, they know medium, full-bodied. So to me, that is a major misconception. I mean, there's a lot of strong women, even in our industry, Yanni Garcia and Cynthia Fuente, just to name a few. Yeah, for me, that's a total misconception. There's a ton of women out there that thoroughly enjoy the cigar culture. It is laughable and it is total bullshit. This is not all about just men enjoying cigars. This is about people enjoying cigars. Yeah, I mean, I have to agree. You know, as you know, uh, you know, I met my wife in the cigar industry. Absolutely. You know, she loves smoking a premium cigar. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, we light up a cigar every night. We, you know, we bond. Yeah. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with women smoking cigars. I mean, it's it's perfectly acceptable these days. Absolutely. I would be like uh, like judging a woman or just saying that having a spirit is only for men. Right? It right. sounds silly, yeah. but it's the same concept, sure. right? So no, women enjoy premium cigars just like men do. It's not just a male exclusive, you know, culture. Sure. So Maz, what about the idea that cigars are only meant to be smoked outside? Fats, I love smoking a cigar outdoors, obviously weather permitting, but there's so many great retail shops across the country, or actually across the world for that matter, that have lounges, ventilation's great, and sometimes, you know, depending on your geographic area, you need to go indoors to enjoy a cigar. As long as the, the room is properly ventilated, obviously there's nothing wrong with enjoying a cigar indoors. You know, to each his own, and I, I know some people that have like obviously fire pits outside their house, they prefer to smoke outdoors. But if you smoke in an environment that has good ventilation, and obviously it's too cold outside or too warm outside at the time, being in a lounge and the comfort of that lounge is actually a perfect place to enjoy a cigar. So outside is great, but you know what? Inside is great as well. You know, me and my wife smoke inside the house. Right. You know, we have a, an air purifying system in the house, you know, that purifies the air so many times an hour. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so we have that luxury. Right. But again, you know, you know, if I have to smoke a cigar outside, you know, I don't mind it. Like you said, as long as the weather permitting, I yeah. mean, there's no, there's no right or wrong answer. It's, it's where you like to enjoy your cigar. Exactly, exactly. But I think if you have that kind of misconception that cigars are only meant to be smoked outdoors, that you can't bring them indoors to enjoy them, I think that needs to be thrown out because you know, if it's properly ventilated, or you know, in your, in your situation, your wife smokes cigars, you enjoy cigars. I mean, the, the aroma of a cigar to me is intoxicating. I love the aroma of a cigar doesn't bother me. As long as the room is well ventilated and you're not sitting in your own smoke, right. obviously, it's great. Sure. So yeah, inside, outside, you enjoy it, go for it. All right, so I got one more misconception for you that really bothers me. All cigar smokers are snobs, snooty. What do you think? Well, you know what? Honestly, that one bothers me too. You know, people, you know, even commented on the channel. They're like, oh, these guys in their three-piece suit, they think they're fancy, they're fancy shoes and socks. Listen, we're regular people, mm -hmm. right? We enjoy cigars. I've always said cigars are the common equalizer, right? So you can go in the lounges, there's guys from all different walks of life. There's people from all different walks of life. Construction workers, attorneys, right? Doctors. And you know what? The, it doesn't matter how you're dressed or what you dress. Listen, we dress like this because obviously we deal in a luxury item business. We work for Holtz. I've been to Davidoff stores. They dress like this too. But that doesn't mean those people are snobs, right? right? For me, Listen, we were both born in South Philadelphia, right? We come from humble beginnings. Yep. We dress appropriate for our job. Right. Doesn't mean you're a snob. If a guy wears a two-piece, a three-piece, a four-piece suit, it doesn't mean he's a snob, right? So you're just dressing for the part, right? Sure. So, no, you're not a snob. I mean, I love the fact that a cigar is a great equalizer. Like, for me, that is what the cigar culture is built upon. 
You could sit down with people across from someone and have a phenomenal conversation from a different walk of life, a different political view. It doesn't matter, right? It's all about the cigar, right, and your common bond with that person. So that whole misconception of like only snooty people smoke cigars, oh, you think you look fancy, that's total bull****. Right? Yep. And it's total bullshit. That's what people want to say when they're just slandering cigar smokers. Listen, we enjoy this for a reason. The camaraderie, right? The, the, the great equalizer of a cigar. Mm -hmm. Talking about common bonds. This brings people together, yes, right? I always said this is, this is tobacco rolled in a tube. And I've had phenomenal conversations over the cigars. And I've had phenomenal relationships built over cigars. Yeah, we've met so many great people. I've, I've know, been best man at weddings. Friends. I've, I've christened kids over cigars. Mm -hmm. You know, from starting from just sitting back with someone, yep. talking to them over a cigar from all different walks of life. Some of my best friends in the world today came from that conversation over cigars. So it's not about being a snob, it's not being a snoot. Don't judge people about how they're dressed. Because you sitting there with a jeans and a hoodie, you're enjoying a cigar, guess what? This guy sitting here with his two piece, his three piece, right now enjoying a cigar. But you know what, when I go home, I'm not sleeping, right? So I'm that guy, I'm right. that person. Cigars are meant to be enjoyed. It's a common bond amongst all people. It's all inclusive. Yes. So, Fatch, with that said, do you think the perception that snooty and snobby people only smoke cigars, do you think that's like detrimental to newbies or people that are really want to get into the cigar world? Do you think that prevents people from coming into our world? I mean, I think it does. Um, you know, it's one of those things where they get intimidated. You know, they go into a cigar shop, they see somebody that's dressed to the nines, you know, right. like you said, in a three piece suit. Um, you know, your best thing to do is, you know, don't worry about it. You know, go no. in. Ask questions, you know, we're here to help you. Right. Well, you know, as I said, like to me, the cigar culture is built upon inclusive like behavior. Sure. Like to me, it's all about including people, building relationships, you know? So yeah, I, I, that couldn't be further from the truth when people say that, you know, and, or they feel intimidated by it. Right. So if you're sitting out there right now and you're thinking to yourself, I can't be in that club because I just don't have the wherewithal, you know, clothing wise, financial wise, that's bull****. You're included. Come aboard. So I want to thank you for joining us. Hopefully we put some of those misconceptions to rest. But before we depart, make sure you hit that like button. Smash the subscribe button. And, and we'll, we'll see you here next time. time.